What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth and I'll show you how to make money and save money. So we're going to jump straight into the topic today. Um, something that I've always been infatuated with was the idea of passive income. I remember last November I made a video about passive income and side hustles and I talked about how one of the projects I was wanting to work on was write a book and I wasn't planning on writing the book until the end of the year but I ended up writing it way in the beginning of the year and probably got finished with it around April May time frame and now it's released to the world to read on amazon.com now of course there's other platforms and other publishers that can also publish your book for you but this video specifically if you want to get started writing your book and then publish it on amazon all that good stuff is going to be in this video i'm going to give you all the free game you want so first of all i just want to show you you probably already saw this on the front screen when the video started but i just want to show it again this is just this is just a prized possession of mine you get what i'm saying i know the light's a little bright there but just holding something that you know you created, you know what I'm saying, your name is on it, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's a crazy feeling. And it's a product, and it's a very nice stream of passive income because if you price it, say $19.99, like that's gonna be the eventual price that I bring this book up to right now, it is $14.99, so if you want it at a cheaper price, you can get it right now, just saying. But I know that ain't what y'all came here for. Y'all came here to learn how the process works, so I'm gonna get into that. But anyway, the reason I say that is because if you price it at $19.99 and you get 60% royalties from it, that's like $9.61 per book. Now, all I'm going to say is this. My platform isn't super huge. I have 10,300 and something subscribers, right? All I'm going to say is this. Over 1,600 people have purchased this book and not all of it is even my subscriber base. So what I'm saying is that's $9.61 per book or if it was an ebook, it was a little less, but you get what I'm saying. Whenever you're able to build a product that costs little to make, that you can endlessly get income for, that is a very good idea. So without me going over how much I love receiving passive income, we're gonna talk about how to actually get started and make money doing this. A big part of this channel is to show you how to make money, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Check this out. So I know this video may not appeal to my average subscriber that subscribed for saving money, frugal living, getting out of debt, investment, stuff like that. Because some of you might not be authors and some of you might not want to write books and that's cool. But this video is for the people who actually are thinking about writing a book and want to know how to get started or just genuinely curious what that process looks like, how much it costs. I'm about to go over it. So the first thing, and this is like the super simple thing. And by the way, every piece of advice I give you in this video is actually going to be, it's going to sound a lot easier than it actually is. So step one is opening your phone, going to like your notes app or something, and just creating an outline. Just what do you think the book is going to be about? And for me, it took me the longest to figure out what the title was going to be. So I just started the outline. I was like, all right, introduction. We're going to start with the introduction. Yes, I am, I am getting somewhere. Introduction, right? And that was honestly all I started with. And so one day I just sat on my couch and I started typing on Microsoft Word. You don't have to, I thought you had, you'd have to like download a, a fancy type of software to write a book. You're good with just using Word, to be honest with you. But anyway, I started typing on Microsoft Word. I just started typing out the introduction. And what I wanted to do was as my ideal audience, the person that I'm talking to. I thought about what I would say to them, but through a book. I thought about a person who was already subscribed to my YouTube channel, who already is grasping what it means to be financially literate and things of that nature. But I wanted to give them a problem statement a much different problem statement than I've ever delivered on my YouTube channel. So they didn't feel like they were buying a book which had essentially what my YouTube channel says. I wanted it to be completely different. So that was where I started with the introduction. And as I started typing out the introduction, I was like, man. And then once I finished the introduction, I closed my laptop and I just went on about my day, right? And you know, as the day went on, I would be like walking or I'd be at the gym or I'd be, I'd be doing something, you know what I'm saying? And I'd be like, let me stop what I'm doing real quick and I just thought of an idea. Delayed gratification, okay. Investing, okay. And I just started thinking of all these ideas and I just had a bunch of ideas for chapters. And so I was just like, wow. I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna order these, but I have these in front of me now. And so as I typed the book, this is just how I did it. But as, as I start writing out this book, the way it flows is gonna determine which topic goes next. And that was how I did it. So the first step in a nutshell is just making an outline, 
thinking about the book throughout the day and just adding on to the outline as you go on. And then as you get more ideas and as you start typing your book out, you're gonna get more ideas and you're just gonna keep typing it like that. And that's essentially the way I was able to write my book. Just constantly thinking about it, just looking at the outline list honestly just gave me a bunch of ideas. Just like looking at a few words, it's amazing how looking at just a few words can bring a bunch of ideas to your mind and what should go in a chapter. And so beside each chapter on the outline, I put in parentheses what that chapter would consist of. So like, let's say the chapter was delayed gratification, right? I, I didn't just talk about delayed gratification in the sense of saving money. I talked about delayed gratification in terms of delaying your gratification from saying something you want to say really, really bad to a person that may not have the best impact, like giving your boss a piece of your mind, for example, and making stable minded decisions, things like that. Just by looking at the words, delayed gratification made me think of these things. So that's what I put beside every single chapter thing. And I just kind of let it sit a little bit. And I spent a couple hours every single day typing out the book. And, and I just kept adding on. And then, you know, and the crazy thing about the book, I just wanted it to be about 10 to 12 chapters. Ended up going over on that. It was like 16 chapters. But it's crazy because after you finish something, you're like, man, I got another idea. And that's going to happen sometimes. But that was just my process. It sounds a little more chaotic than I thought it would sound when I was planning on saying this, but that's that's legit what the process was. So if you don't know where to get started, just make an outline and go from there. And then once the first draft of your book is done, because trust me, you done made all kinds of mistakes, whether it's typographical errors, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, you probably made all kinds of mistakes, whether it was, you know, misspelling, whether it was a comma or a period in the wrong place, a semicolon in the wrong place, or it might not even be typo related. It might just be the way your book flows. So like, I recommend just reading it over. Like I read my book over like three times the first time. And what I did the first time was I ran it through Grammarly, which is free by the way, but Grammarly is not 100% accurate. So you definitely need to use your own discretion as you're going through with it. But I ran it through Grammarly, then I read it again, and then I found some other things and I you know, fixed those mistakes. Then I read it again, like as an actual reader, like just critiquing everything and I felt a few more things. So you're gonna find stuff all the time is what I'm getting at. And I consider myself to be a good writer and I did well in writing in school and everything. But even when I wrote my own book, I still found a decent amount of mistakes because this, this is 170 pages of book we're talking about. You get what I'm saying? So there's going to be some mistakes. We're only human, right? So what I did after this, and this is optional, you don't have to do this, but I hired an editor. So after I did my editing, I hired a whole editor and she found even more things. And she also put it within the standards that Amazon wants. And not just Amazon, pretty much any professional platform that sells books that is taking your book into consideration to be published, she put it within those standards. So whether that was italicizing certain things, putting quotations around certain things, putting the hyphens between certain words, Things like things like that that we don't always think about and mistakes that we make by either putting a hyphen there or not putting there. So she either removed hyphens or put hyphens in there to make it more accurate, grammatically speaking, stuff like that. So I say it's definitely a good investment. It is a little spendy. It's about four hundred dollars, but it is an investment and it is an investment that can pay you for the rest of your life. So. I say, why not do it if you have the funds to do so? So I'm going to be completely honest with you. That takes like between three to six weeks to get done. And um, the platform that I used to actually hire an editor was Fiverr.com. F-I-V-E-R-R.com. I'll link that in the description if you want more information on it. And you can just see, you can find editors on Fiverr for much cheaper but I went for the five star one, the one that has notoriety, all that good stuff, because I want to put out the best product I could put out. That was just my mindset behind it. And you want to specifically look for a copy editor. And by the way, this is all for a nonfiction book. I'm assuming if you're watching this, you're a nonfiction type of person. But even if you are a fiction person, you want to have a copy editor. But then also for fiction, you, there's like a whole row of different editors that you might want to go through proofreaders, a story editor, all of that good stuff. I don't have expertise in that, so I'm not gonna speak too much on it, but just look at other videos if you are into fiction as well. But I'm just gonna help anybody get through the process of how to write a book. So anyway, it's gonna take between three to six weeks to actually get your copy edited version of your book back. And so throughout this time, 
is a perfect time to just let your book sit. If you listen to most experienced authors, they will tell you after you've written your book, just let let it sit for a month. Don't reread it because eventually you're going to you're going to become blind to the errors or blind to whatever the case is or you might get another idea and it'll just take you that much longer because then you have to run it by another editor. It's going to take you that much longer to get your book out there. So just let it sit for a month. Let it mature as they say and think about what you want your cover to look like. And this was when I started envisioning what my cover would look like. Now, the artist I worked with ended up making my book cover look way more amazing than I imagined in my mind, but I was able to come up with a vision. I, I thought of a silhouette of a person standing, just looking at a goal they had, but it looked very complex, even dangerous to get to that goal. And that is indicative of the whole journey of building wealth, which is why the book is called The Wealth Journey. And if you haven't by now, think of what the title is going to be, because the title is obviously going to go on the cover. Think about how you want your name placed. Do you want your name to be at the top, at the bottom? What type of imagery do you want? Do you want like a simplistic type of book cover? Do you want a more realistic, complex looking one? How do you want it to look? Think about if you have a subtitle, like my subtitle is a guide to financial freedom. What do you want that subtitle to look like? What font size do you want it to be? And you also have to think if you're wanting to print a paperback, there's a front, there's a spine, and there's a back. This is actually a small detail that I completely didn't think about. I don't know why, because I definitely read books pretty often, but I just thought about the front cover. But during this time I was thinking about my front cover, I didn't think about what text I wanted on the back cover or how I wanted the spine to look like. So just think about that. But this is just something you wanna think about. You don't wanna necessarily hire an artist just yet and you specifically wanna go with a cover artist with this. Not just anyone who can use Adobe Photoshop. This is a specific skill. Book cover, you wanna look for that type of, um, you wanna look for that type of artist. And I'll tell you why here in a minute. But anyway, you don't wanna hire one just yet. You just, you wanna think about it. You just wanna let the idea marinate in your mind a little bit. Go off, do whatever you're doing. You know, play basketball, watch TV, go to the gym, go to work, go eat, do something, right? Once you get your copy edited version of your book back, you're gonna to wanna to go over it a few times because you know, <laughs> when I got mine back, I was like, oh man, this looks great. And she did a fantastic job by the way, but you're, not one person is gonna catch every little thing, especially if they're on a time crunch and they have other projects that they need to do with copy editing. So there may be a few mistakes. She didn't make, she didn't, it's not that she made mistakes, but there were still some things that weren't corrected. So I went over there a few more times. I went over it like, I think two or three more times, found little mistakes here and there, and I tweaked them and that was that. Now, if you want to, you can hire another editor if you wanna really be on it, but you don't have to do that because if there's if they have two different styles or preferences for writing, you might get two different versions of your book and you may not like you may not like what you get. Just saying, I just went with one editor because of that exact reason right there. So between me and the editor that I hired, that's how my book got edited, just going over it several times in a row. Okay, so once everything is edited, now you gotta format your book. So I did an ebook, a paperback, and a hardback book. For the sake of the simplicity of this video, I'm just gonna go over the ebook and the paperback book. If you want me to make a hardback cover video in the future, just let me know, I will do that. But that deserves its own video because it is a pretty lengthy process, in my humble opinion. Notice how we haven't even gotten to Amazon yet. So we're gonna start with the ebook. So let's say we're starting with an ebook, right? Which is very lucrative. Amazon pays 70% royalties for your eBooks, so long as you price them over $2.99, and they are much cheaper and easier to make. Now, I'm gonna give you my unpopular opinion. I think paying for someone to format your book is a complete waste of money, especially if you're making an eBook. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there that show you exactly how to format your book on Microsoft Word, and that's literally all you have to do. So I recommend just typing how to format an ebook on Microsoft Word. There will be a ton of videos that come up. Just click on them and watch them. It's probably about, I think the one I watched was like 20 minutes and I taught myself how to do it. Now, is it a lengthy process? Yes, but here's why I think it's a waste of money to pay someone to format your book for you. One, remember how I said the copy editor took like three to six weeks to get back to me with mine? It's gonna be the same turnaround for formatting a book. And some people will actually charge you per page. So it might be something like $5 per page. That gets expensive, especially if you have a, a long book. You get what I'm saying? So 
I recommend you just learning how to do it on your own, formatting it. Uh, it does take a little bit. It took me about three hours the first time I ever did it, but I figured, you know, it's gonna, three hours is a much better turnaround than, you know, three weeks. I want my book to be done now. You get what I'm saying? And also, it's free if you do it by yourself. And another thing is, you actually get to test your book out in Amazon to see if it's quality and meets the quality standards from the get-go anyway. So when you're flipping through it, you'll know if it meets the standards or not. So that's why I just think it's a complete waste. And it's actually a lot easier to format an ebook than a paperback book. So even if you pay for the paperback book to get formatted, I would recommend not to pay to get the ebook formatted. I could literally make a whole course on how to write a book successfully and get sales and all that stuff, but I don't want to get too, too deep into it. Just trust me. I don't think you should pay to get your ebook formatted. And don't worry, I'm going to actually link in the description videos on how to actually do these steps so you are not left behind. Because like I said, these steps sound a lot easier than they actually are to do. So I'm going to link how to format your book and all that good stuff in the description. So don't worry. Now for your paperback, it's going to be a lot more difficult because you have to figure out what book size do you want. I just looked at the most popular universal standards. So the ebook is actually really easy because you don't have to really size it. It's just the size of a Word document. And then what happens is once you put it on Amazon, it puts it in the size of a Kindle or a cell phone screen or whatever the case is. So you really don't have to do much of anything there besides, of course, your indentions and things of that nature and how you want it to flow. That's all up to you. When you do your good old handy dandy paperback, it's a little more extensive than that because of the simple fact that you have to figure out how you want to size your book. And I would recommend just looking at the most popular book sizes within whatever genre that you're using. So five by eight was perfect for me. That's like when I'm holding a five by eight book in my hand, it feels good. You know what I'm saying? I don't really prefer the six by nine too much, but that's just my preference. You might think differently and your audience might think differently And it. There's nothing wrong if you do have an audience to reach out to them and say what book sizes they prefer, especially if you're making a product specifically for them. You get what I'm saying? So anyway, you can go to Amazon and they actually have templates you can download for whichever book sizes. And it's actually word templates like Microsoft word templates of if you want a five by eight, they'll give you a template that's automatically five by eight so you don't have to do any resizing manually there in Microsoft Word. So that takes that off of you. So that's why I also think you shouldn't pay somebody because they're going to literally just do the same thing or even run your book through a software and then format it for you. So I recommend you just do this yourself. Anyway, from there, you're just going to want to watch a few videos on how to format your paperback book and I promise you, you will get it. It's not hard, it's just very specific. You know, think about page numbers, think about chapter titles and things of that nature. Table of contents, stuff like that. The videos I have linked in the description are going to show you how to do that. Okay, so now once you've edited everything and once you got your book formatted, now you're gonna know exactly how many pages are in your book. At this point is when you want to look for your cover designer. I watched so many YouTube videos on this that YouTubers actually had recommendations. I would have gone through Fiverr for this, but I ended up finding someone who was just really, really phenomenal at what she does. Uh, her name is Ida Fia Svedingson. I think that's how you pronounce her name. She has her own website, her own business and all that stuff. And she is amazing at what she does. Like once I saw her book cover designs, that was it. Like I already knew what I wanted. The investment was a little pricey. It costed me about $950. But the book cover is beautiful, so like I can't really complain. You get what I'm saying? Like this book has its own brand within a brand. Like you see these milestone markers, they're everywhere. They're even on the spine right here between the title and my first and last name. I don't know if you can even see that. If you get the book, you'll see it. <laughs> but anyway, um, what, whoever your cover designer is, I'm not saying you have to go through her because like I said, that is a very pricey investment going that way. You could also use a website called 99designs, which that can get pretty expensive, but you have more control over what the price is on that website because they have a bunch of different options. Now, if you're just doing the ebook, don't spend over $400 on an ebook cover. You could easily go to Fiverr and spend $50 and get a phenomenal looking book cover. I promise you. But if you're doing like a paperback and an ebook, I would recommend going all out because you're going to get a quality performance from the person and your selling point of your book is your cover. So that's why I recommend going all out, especially if you're going to do more than an ebook and you're going to do a front, spine, and a back. And especially if you want to go hardcover route, you definitely want to get a high tier type of cover. You don't got to spend a thousand dollars like I did, 
but make sure the artist is good at what they do and if they are they're probably going to charge you a premium do what's best for your budget once again this is a financial channel so i want you to do what's best for your budget what's best for your finances if you have more money to invest you can invest more if you have less then you know do what's best for your budget the communication piece is going to be what's essential to your cover artist because your cover artist is going to need to know First of all, what your vision is, how much free reign do they have over what they do with your cover, what colors do you want, things like that. So that's why I told you to take that month and just think about what you wanted your cover to look like. So you should have a pretty decent vision by now. And I recommend even just before you get to your cover artist, type out what you want your vision to look like so you can envision it more and get more ideas as you go. But anyway, you communicate to them what your vision is for the front cover things of that nature. You can just tell them like for the spine, I just want the title and my name. And that's pretty much it, you know, pretty basic. And then on the back, I have custom text. And you know, within that month, you could have taken the time to come up with custom text for like a blurb for the back of your book. Because usually when people go on Amazon and don't really know what a book is about, they read the description, but they also check the back of the book because there is going to be a picture of the back of your book to see what the blurb says on the back of it to see, does this entice me to read it or ah? Uh, because it might be the difference between them clicking on it and then getting disinterested or buying your book. The choice is yours. Anyway, after you communicate all of those items, they might not even be that interested in your spine and your back cover just yet, but it's good for them to have so they don't have to communicate to you and it takes like, you know, a day for you to get back and things of that nature. They'll have it all in one go, so it'll minimize the amount of time it takes for your book cover to be done. And this is also something that's going to take about a month to do. So I finished my book back in like April. It didn't get published till August because of the months in between working with professionals. You get what I'm saying? So once you let them know all that, you let them know how many pages are in your book because you may not really know why you need to know that, but it's going to determine how wide the spine is and the dimensions for the book. And they have to be spot on with these dimensions because Amazon is super picky about how wide a paperback is supposed to be in conjunction with the paper between the covers. You get what I'm saying? So it's very, very, very important. With an ebook, you don't gotta worry about all this nonsense. You just attach the PNG to Amazon or the JPG to Amazon, and that's your cover. With this, you gotta have specific dimensions, and your cover designer is gonna need to know all this stuff, and that's also why you want a cover designer specifically, because they're gonna get the dimensions perfect. Whereas somebody else who's just good at art in general, they, they might not be good with book covers and knowing the dimensions and stuff like that. So you want to hire a book cover designer. You also need to let your cover artist know what color you want your pages to be. And obviously there's going to be the black and white because the words black and white. But under the black and white, the page color is going to either be white color pages or cream color pages. Any author and any avid reader is going to straight up tell you, Go with the cream color pages because it's easier on the eyes. And if you pick up any book in your house, I guarantee you, with the exception of maybe two or three, but most of the books you pick up in general at the library, at your house, are going to have cream color pages. And you may not have noticed that before because I definitely didn't notice it because it's off white. So I just thought it was white, right? The reason is it's, e it's easier for the reader experience. It's easier on the eyes and you're more likely to binge read with cream color pages than you are with white pages because you get a little more eye strain with the white pages. And the reason you need to let the cover designer know what color the pages are is for one, they can choose what color the book is going to be that coincides really well with the cream pages. And two, believe it or not, cream color pages on Amazon are actually thicker than the white pages. So if your book is like 170 pages and you don't tell them that it's cream color and they assume that it's white color pages, you're gonna upload it to Amazon you're gonna choose cream color and it's gonna tell you you have the wrong dimensions and you're gonna to have to reach back out to your artist and have them fix it. So to save you that time, that's literally what happened to me, so to save you that time, that is my advice I give you. So once your cover's done, you got the front, the back and the spine done, cool. It's formatted, it's edited, Everything you put into the book is there, cool. Now what you do is you upload the files individually to Amazon. You're gonna to go to Amazon KDP for this. And on Amazon KDP, they let you upload your ebook and your paperback book and all that good stuff. Super easy to do, super straightforward. It says title, you enter the title. It says subtitle, you enter the subtitle. You're gonna to wanna to have your book description and stuff like that ready, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna to wanna to upload your cover files. Make sure the paperback version of your book is a PDF file. Your ebook cover is either going to be a JPG or a PNG type of image. I think PNG is the higher quality of the two. 
and then you upload your book and then um, I recommend not releasing it right away. I recommend actually, if you have a paperback book specifically, your ebook is gonna pretty much look exactly how it looks as an ebook when you look through it on Amazon. You wanna also make sure you order a proof copy of your book from Amazon. It's only gonna cost as much as it costs to print. So if you have like, let's say 180 pages, it's gonna be like $3. It really doesn't cost much at all. Just so you know, when you order a proof copy, it's gonna definitely come with this hideous looking gray bar. You can't move it or nothing, like it's just embedded on the cover. Your actual book will not have one. But the reason I'm telling you this is because like, if, you, if you've never done it before, you're, you're probably not gonna know that it's gonna be there. And this is just letting you know that it's a proof copy. It is not for resale, stuff like that. But you can actually go through it and see how the book actually looks in your hands. Are your margins good? Um, one of my books actually had an issue where if I didn't order the proof copy, I never would have known this. But basically some of the words or letters, I should say, throughout the book were just randomly bolded and it looked kind of weird. And I wanted everything to look uniform. So I was able to look at that and fix that mistake early on. Pro tip, because you may not catch stuff like that if you're just looking at it through Amazon. Amazon is pretty accurate, but you, I will always say you wanna order a proof copy first because this is going out to the world for them to read. The ebook process is much simpler. You can actually shift through it you know, on Amazon KDP and you'll know what it looks like on a Kindle, a cell phone, on a tablet, on any device. So it's actually really awesome. And if you don't like what you see on the ebook, you can make slight adjustments in your Word document and then re-upload it. And that's another reason why I think you should just format it yourself because because who wants to send your book back to a formatter who it already took you a long time to get it back from if you could just do it yourself and it's free. And the same thing applies with the paperback. If you don't like something, you can re-upload it and you're gonna upload like a PDF version of it. You're not gonna necessarily do a Word file. You can, but I recommend doing a PDF file and that's what Amazon prefers for the paperback. For the ebook, Amazon prefers a Word file. And then once you're satisfied with everything, you hit publish. I recommend having a launch strategy so your books actually sell because, you know, I could only imagine it's got to be discouraging to put a book out there that no one ever reads. So you definitely want to do your research, look at other YouTube videos. I could even make a video in the future if you want on a launch strategy that will definitely work and get you sales right out the gate. But, you know, this whether you have an audience or you don't have an audience, it doesn't matter either way. Your book has a potential to sell or not to sell. And if you're part of my audience and you haven't gotten my book yet, Feel free to buy the book. It's going to help you out financially. I promise you. But yeah, that's it. And after that, it's on for sale. And I wish the best to you in writing your book. And of course, you want to make sure you get the price right and figure out how much royalties you want to get from it. But also be honest with how much you think the book should cost. Like, I think I put together a very high quality book, so I'm charging pretty high for it. But I also know, like, there's some books in my genre that are written by famous people like Dave Ramsey and, you know, Robert Kiyosaki and Tony Robbins and stuff. And they have, like, $27 books, right? So I'm like, I ain't gonna do, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna be doing that much now. But I want to price it high enough so people know that this is value that you're getting. So think about how much you want to price your book. And just remember, for paperback books, Amazon gives you 60% royalties and that's on their platform specifically. And if you're doing eBooks, it's gonna be 70% royalties. So my eBook is $9.99 and my paperback book is $19.99. And just so you know, I definitely wanted to make my eBook more expensive. Like I wanted it to be close to like $11 or $12. But once you get over a certain threshold, no longer do you get 70% royalties, you're down to 30% royalties. So just keep that in mind. The highest you'll probably want to go with an ebook is $9.99 and that'll get you the max amount of royalties. Because if you price it at $12 and you only get 30% royalties, you're getting less than you would get if you sold it for $9.99. And you're going to definitely get more buyers if you sell it for $9.99 than $12.99. It's hard saying $99 and my tongue is getting dry. So I'm going to wrap this video up. But, def but anyways, definitely watch more videos on that and learn more about it. And again, if you want me to make more videos on this, let me know in the comments because I'm all about helping you make more money. But I just wanted to let you know about the process from start to finish of what it looks like and what the timeline looks like to write a book. So you can be on your way to making some good passive income. At this point, if I just sold four books a day, that's $2,400 a month easily. So also think about what you're going to do and how you're going to strategically use the passive income that you get. Are you going to save it? Are you going to invest it? Are you going to take that money and put it into your next book? What are you going to do with it? Anyway, think about that. But that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you 
control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.